What's up guys, welcome back. When you're first starting out with non-metallic metals, there are two main stumbling blocks you need to overcome before you begin to get a convincing effect. The first is contrast and the second is highlight placement. We'll look at contrast in a future video. Today we're going to be focusing on how to place your highlights. It might seem confusing at first, but like a lot of things, once you understand the why, the how will become easy after a bit of practice. To start off, you need to understand how light reflects on four basic geometric shapes. On a flat square like this, I think you'll find that's a rectangle. Shh, shut at you. On a flat square like this, the highlight will be at the furthest point from your light source. So essentially, the light flows over the surface and comes to rest at the lower edge. If the light was over here on the right, the highlight would be at the lower left corner, whereas if the light was on the left, it would be at the lower right corner. This doesn't have to be a square, it can be any flat surface. Next up, we have the cylinder. On a cylinder, the highlight will be directly below the light source, stretching along the length of the cylinder, with the light fading out from that point following the shape of the surface. Notice that the highlight is always going to match the shape of the object you're working with. So after the cylinder we have the cone, which is essentially a cylinder that's been squished to a point at one end. Again, the light is going to react much the same as with the cylinder, with the highlight being directly below the light source. However, instead of being a thin line across the length, your highlight will be more of a triangle matching the shape of the cone, with the light becoming less intense as it moves away from that initial highlight point. The other side of the cone will just be a mirror image, allowing you to paint both sides in exactly the same way. The last object we're going to look at is a sphere. Again, the highlight is going to be directly below your light source. In order to match the shape of your object, your highlight should be round with the light fading out from that point following the shape of the sphere. In practice, these are usually the hardest parts to paint as it can be quite difficult to create circular highlights. So with these four highlight rules, you have a solid foundation for creating a realistic metal effect on your image. Now before we look at how to apply these on a miniature, it's important to understand two basic concepts. Firstly, we'll look at a principle called opposites. Let's say you have several flat sections joined together. The highlight on one section should end where the shadow begins on the other. So if we have the light shining down from above here, the highlight is on the lower corner of the square, but if we place another piece on top, we see that the highlight ends up directly opposite to the shadow on the other section. Notice that that same concept is applied here on the end piece of the cylinder. You can see that the shadow of the circle is right next to the highlight on the main surface of the cylinder. If you want to make things a bit more interesting, you can utilize a concept I like to call the bounce. Now there's a lot of technical stuff involved in this where your shadows represent the horizon line, the ground or other objects close to your metal, but I think it's easier just to think of it in terms of light bouncing over the surface. To illustrate what I mean, imagine you have a long flat surface like this and your light is shining down from above. On a small flat section, we know from earlier that the highlight would gather at the furthest away point from the light, but on a long section such as this, it's better to imagine the light bouncing along the length much like a stone skipping over water, creating a highlight or a ripple each time it hits the surface. When you're doing this, try not to make these equidistant. The space between each bounce should be fairly random. If you make them too uniform, it will look unnatural and you'll lose the effect. You can apply this exact same concept to a cylinder. So we'll have our initial highlight here, then the light is going to bounce over the surface in both directions, creating these little stripes of light and shadow. Notice that your first highlight is going to be the strongest and the light becomes more diffuse as you move away from that point. Also notice that the light stops bouncing quite abruptly just before we hit our darkest shadow. If we use our stone skipping analogy again, imagine you had a cylindrical lake floating in space. Your stone is only going to be able to do a few jumps before it has nowhere left to go and it just falls off the edge into the abyss below. We'll apply the same idea to our cone, the only difference being that the light continues to bounce all the way around. On a sphere, the light only bounces once. Technically, it doesn't actually bounce over the surface, it's going to bounce off the sphere, deflect off the ground and come back and hit the sphere from below, but it's a lot easier just to think of it as a bouncing on the surface. Now the trick when applying these concepts on a model is to look at each section of the model and work out whether it could be represented by a flat, a cylinder, a cone, or a sphere. As a rule of thumb, curved areas will be cylinders, rounded sections will be spheres, 
curved areas which are tapered will be cones and hopefully flat areas should be self-explanatory. When you're starting out with this, Space Marines are great to practice this on as each section is very simple to work out. So now that you have all the shapes in place, it's simply a matter of deciding where your light source is going to be and then you'll be able to work out the position of the highlights by simply using the rules for highlighting those four basic shapes. Let's have a look at a couple of practical examples so you can see how this works on an actual model. Here on this ogre, I've painted green metallic armor parts. You can see that the shoulder pad can be broken down into three sections. The center part is a cylinder and the two outer parts are slightly tapered, therefore we can think of them as cones. So you can see that I've used the highlighting rule for cylinders on the middle section with the main highlight running across the center of the armor plate, fading out into a shadow. I got quite a nice effect with just that one highlight so I didn't bother using the bounce concept. I think with all the other little details going on, to add multiple highlights might have made it a bit too busy. The outer parts were painted in much the same way as the main section but with a slightly more triangular highlight. In hindsight here, I should have made that taper a bit more pronounced, so that's a small mistake on my part. Also notice that I've used a dark line here to help separate the three areas. This gold star motif is essentially a flat surface, so I've put the main highlight towards the lower edge. And these two gold rivets are round, so I've used the sphere rule, putting a strong circular highlight near the top, which fades out to a shadow along the lower side, following the shape of the sphere. Alright, so let's look at a more complicated example now. On Angron, I went for more of a dirty gold colour. At first glance it looks quite intimidating but once you break down each section it becomes much easier to understand. This rounded top section here is a very skinny cylinder so I've added my main highlight here under the light source and then it fades out to the shadow following the shape of the cylinder. Notice that I've also used the bounce concept to add a second highlight here. Now I've made a small mistake with this because the second highlight shouldn't be as strong as the main one and I should have also added another bounce highlight on the other side around here. Remember that the light bounces in both directions so if I was to paint it again that's definitely something I would correct. This area here is a flat surface but because of the way it's tilted it's not going to catch much light but you can see that I've added a subtle highlight here and here to add some contrast between the highlight and shadow on the connecting sections. These little studs are spheres and I should really have given them a bit more of a brighter highlight. It's not that big of a deal but it's definitely something I could improve on. All this banding work is essentially lots of flat sections. Now I have made one pretty glaring mistake and I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to see if you can work it out. <laughs> If you picked this part here, congratulations. This should really be the same colour as this part here. You can see on the other side that I've done it correctly as the light is consistent. I think I must have had a bit of a brain malfunction when I was painting this. So anyway, as these are flat sections, the light is going to travel down and gather at the lower edge here. And because it's essentially a long thin piece, we're going to use the bounce concept. So the light just bounces around, creating these little light flares as it hits the surface. Also notice the use of opposites where the sections connect. Now his forearm is a series of connected cylinders so we have the main highlight running along the top here and it fades out to the shadow as the light moves away to the sides. The little spikes are flat surfaces so we've put the highlight at the bottom and the shadow at the top. I should have added a bounce highlight on the forearm sections just here and here so that the shadow of the spike was pushed up against a highlight on the armor plates. This plate on the hand here is a flat surface so you can see I've made another little mistake as the highlight should be going in the other direction. So you can see that even with some mistakes you can still get quite a convincing effect. As long as you understand the basic premise the odd mistake here and there isn't going to be the end of the world. Alright guys, so I hope that helps to demystify how to approach non-metallic metals. As I said at the start, I'll probably do another video on contrast as that's a pretty key concept. If you're unclear on something, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer. I'd like to say a big thank you to all my generous patron supporters. Your donations really help me justify spending more time on creating these videos for you. If you'd like to support my work, you can do so by hitting the Patreon link in the description and signing up for as little as $1 a month. Thanks again. Bye for now.